Welcome back. Uh, we've had a great holiday and I hope you had a, a good a nice holiday as well and that you enjoyed your Christmas and are now enjoying this new year which of course is going to be fantastic. So let's think about our course books. This one you know well because we've been on it for the last set of videos. Uh, the Art of Dying by myself and my wife. It's a good book, packed full of examples. Then, next time, probably, we'll be doing this, which is a book I wrote, Shining Light on Transcendence. It's uh, a difficult book in many ways. Um, however, uh, there, there it will be. And the one today is this one. Um, I came across this in a post on, uh, on I think it was YouTube, and it's called The Worm at the Core, and it's by Sheldon Solomon, Jeff Greenberg, and Tom Pisensky. Um It is a great book, and so what we're going to find out is what is the worm at the core, and why on earth are we thinking about worms and cores? when we're doing death. We're thinking about worms and cores when we're doing death because that book is, in fact, all about the way we respond to death. Now, all of you who are watching this video will have been changed just by the mention of the word death. And if I was to do something more and say, think about your own death, um, and let's assume that you were compliant and did that, you'd have changed yourself in the way, be way you behaved. And so I'm going to look at this uh, using examples from their book. We don't need to do too much on this, but we do, do need to do enough just so that um, you'll understand other people's reluctance to discuss death. So let's start right at the beginning. Um, I'm going to take an evolutionary stance on this as they do in that book. Uh, and that is that as we crawled up from the slimy ooze uh, and uh, came into this world, we um, were surrounded by danger all the time. It was a question of not being killed, not being destroyed not being uh, in some way annihilated. As we became bigger um, and older in a species sense, as the species began to develop, then um, our thoughts about death uh, were very important because you see in our comfort state of today not many of us give many thoughts to death and if we do we don't realize what they're doing to us and that in fact they are triggering an old evolutionary response now what does that mean it means that when we start thinking about our own death then uh, we change our behavior and, and absolutely we would have been required to do this a long time ago although now it's not so important so what's the evidence for that fact well first of all i let's take a modern example freud the psychologist freud said uh, there is a paradox here because when people talk about death they don't talk about their own death, they talk about the death of a friend or a companion or somebody they're talking to, never their own death. And this was called the Freudian paradox. So just watch yourself when you go out to a party or in a group of your friends and you start talking about death, you're very unlikely to say, well, I've got uh, a few more years to live and uh, I think when I die I'm going to be buried in a, uh, a eco-friendly coffin. 
probably one made out of willows or something. You'd never say that. And if you did say that, the person you were speaking to would say, well, it's very nice knowing you, Peter. Um, I'm scared and talk to somebody else. They do not like it. We do not like talking about our own death. And being reminded of our own death has some very important changes in behavior. So let's just start with the first example in the book, which I think is an excellent one, just to show you how important thoughts of death are in modifying behavior. This was a study which was carried out with a number of judges. The judges were functioning members of the judiciary and they were divided up into two groups and given a personality questionnaire. The ostensible reason was to show that their personalities were the same because they were going to have to judge and it was important that uh, the um, that I hear Casper the um, that the judges uh, were seen to be fair. So uh, the questionnaire were given to group A of judges, the first group, it was just a normal personality questionnaire, and that was all there was to it. And they filled it in, uh, scored, and they were just ordinary judge judging folk. Uh, group B was given exactly the same questionnaire and as far as the personality questions were concerned they were exactly the same as that in group A so there should be no difference but there was one additional question and this question was how long do you think you're going to live and there may have been something about being buried but at any rate it focused on death very simply very very simply how long are you going to live? That's a simple focusing on death. So the judges were then given the case to judge. Group A uh, saw and had to judge a post prostitute. And she, uh, they were told to give the sentence to the prostitute who had been found um, uh, in, in public. Uh, they, to give whatever sentence they thought. They discussed amongst themselves and they were very clear. The usual fine was $50, so $50 it was. And they were all happy and agreed with that. Nothing surprising so far. But in the group of judges that had just been introduced to their own mortality, but only briefly, there was, in fact, a quite different response same prostitute, same problem, what would they do with her? And they chose a figure of $450, nine times higher than that of Group A. Does that amaze you? And they went for this because their view and their judgment had been altered. Now, if your judgment and view can be altered in such a simple way by questions about death. What on earth is going on in society in general? Well, the book will tell you that there are a number of things that happen uh, when there is discussion of death uh, in, in society. And there's been a lot of that, of course, with the uh, Iraq war, with Iran, um, with North Korea, uh, we are feeling very, um, very threatened, really. And the possibility of death it is much more prevalent than it has been at other times. So what happens to a society that um, uh, has an awareness of death in this way? Well, again, there have been a number of experiments which have been done, and um, <laughs> I, mean, I think they're fascinating. What about this one? Um, two groups of people, ordinary people, actually psychology students, and uh, one was given American flag and a crucifix. 
uh, and the other group were given just blocks of wood uh, and uh, and uh, also something that they could uh, filter with and the task was to use these pieces of equipment to um, uh, to perform some action now I think it's fascinating so again personality questionnaire and another question on death now uh, if they were in the group that had that question or let's take the control group first and the control group that did not have that question they hammered and they would been asked to hammer um, uh, something to the wall they hammered it with the wooden blocks and that was okay uh, and they did their filtering all right and if they uh, were given the American flag and a crucifix then it took them three minutes to filter uh, the sand with the ink in it and uh, hit use the crucifix to hit the uh, um, the thing into the wall they were um, hammering into the wall now both the American flag is symbolic of their culture and the crucifix is symbolic of many people's religion any rate it seems a sacred object so okay it takes you three minutes if you haven't been reminded of your death what happens if you have then it takes very much longer it took about six minutes with people being very reticent to use their sacred object the cross or the American flag to desecrate it by using it to filter sand and this uh, was one of a number of experiments which pointed out that in times where death is mentioned people in the population uh, go towards uh, their culture strongly towards their culture and of course if they're different cultures then you will go towards your culture and the other people will then see you much more as different so there will be cultural problems and uh, they uh, also will uh, be much uh, more aggressive than uh, otherwise and there are nice experiments to show that aggression goes up if you're reminded of death so um, I don't want to go through the whole book for you but I do think that those are important because not only do you go to your own culture not only do you in fact tend to detract from people who are not like you but you choose charismatic leaders and uh, here in England we have chosen the charismatic leader in uh, Boris Johnson and uh, the Americans have chosen the charismatic leader uh, in, Do in uh, Donald Trump so we're behaving just as if there is a lot of death about which indeed there is so uh, what can we take from this we can take that uh, death anxiety it's called existential anxiety about death existential anxiety about death is very strong in us we don't know about its power even unless you happen to have read these books or seen this video you'll think that somebody mentioning death is just mentioning death no they're not they're changing your behavior in quite a powerful way why should that be because for the de during the time of the development of the species we have in fact been trying to stop ourselves from dying and so much of our genetic heritage if you like that or our cultural heritage if you prefer that is directed towards keeping ourselves safe and not dying and so if the idea of dying is brought up it activates within us this fear of death now it's very important that we know this 
because you won't go into a cocktail party anymore and say I'm going to be buried to six foot coffin made of oak with uh, lovely brass knobs on it you won't say that and in actual fact you probably won't mention death unless you want to change the other person's behavior and if you do then you can mention death but it will have its own comeback on you because uh, you may find that the person won't then uh, bond with you in any way and will in fact uh, leave you and go to somebody else so uh, I think that this idea is important for us to know what if you're a doctor and are going to tell somebody that they have a diagnosis of cancer it's not treatable and they're likely to die well we know exactly what happens we um, the doctor feels very um, diffident about this they're getting better now because they're being better trained and the person himself is not terribly keen to hear this news and say so it makes for a very difficult conversation of course what one should do is one puts it all in the positive rather than in the negative of actually dying and uh, in if I was in Victoria Victorian culture in the UK I would of course um, have had probably several members of my family who had died so death was um, very much in evidence and what sort of race were we? well we were very patriotic and uh, went to the flag to defend it I mean there's no doubt about that but also because death was so evident in some way it altered um, our perception of death such that we could talk about it and one did you know how's, how's Johnny is he dying or not that sort of thing and just think of how we behaved towards death in those days when it was common uh, if a hearse was coming by we would uh, bend our heads and um, fall silent as the hearse went by as a um, mark of respect of course now that's all gone as I said I think I said in another video the hearse is followed by a lot of uh, cars beeping their horns wanting to overtake so we have lost that sensitivity and respect for death and what has happened we've swept it under the carpet we don't discuss it hello Casper you're going to come, are you? Um, we swept it under the carpet and we don't discuss it and it's seen as a dangerous topic so I think that's probably enough to give you an idea of um, Jasper, come on, come sit down that's a good boy that's a little good boy um, uh, enough uh, about death and the existential fear of death some people call it the terror of death but I mean it, it's uh, difficult enough just calling it the existential fear of death which doesn't have quite the same negative meaning as the um, as the terror of death now let me just remind you of one thing if you're walking down the road and this is the results of an experiment and you pass a Starbuck you will see uh, stem words cough as coffee gr, G -R, as grind but if you pass not a Starbucks on your way down the street but a funeral parlor you're more likely to choose grave and coffin so again it changes the way you think and changes your behavior so just to remind you for those of you who have come in late this is the book that we're talking about the worm at the core I think I think you ought to ought to know about it 
um, it's a good read. You can go to go and get it from your library, and if you don't want to buy it, and uh, then then you can read it for free. So it, it's it's an interesting and good book, and I think as we're discussing death, then we have to be able to understand the existential fear of death. So thanks very much. And, oh, here's Casper, who's come to join us. Casper, say goodbye to everybody. I doubt he will. But he is purring. He's sort of a happy cat at the moment. And uh, we'll, we'll see you again in a week's time. And then I'm going to uh, do this book, which is the one I wrote. And... Uh, we'll look at what shining light on transcendence means and uh, some of you have already read it and made some really interesting comments and so we'll look at those so do keep your comments coming and again thank you very much for watching this video and Casper and I say goodbye see you next week bye <laughs>